I'm Alan Zajcik with NetEvents TV. Intent-based networking has been described as one of the hottest networking topics of 2018. I'm here today with several experts to talk about intent-based networking and what it means for the data center and for the carrier. Can you briefly describe what intent-based networking is and really what difference it makes? Intent-based networking is the idea of implementing advanced levels of automation within your network. And we at IDC think about intent-based networking as having a couple of uh, foundational components. And uh, so to enable intent-based networking, you need to have visibility into what's happening in, in your network you need to be able to have policy-based automation. So this is uh, being able to tell the network what you want it to do and then have the network actually go and do it for you. Uh, and then a, a third critical piece of intent-based networking is around verifying that the automation that you've asked the network to do has actually been done correctly. So when you put all those together, uh, you get intent-based networking and it's really the idea of being able to implement advanced levels of automation uh, in, into your network. Say you're talking to the CEO of a prospective customer. How do you describe the business benefits of intent-based networking? Well, you know, as, as a former finance person, I think it's relatively easy for me to turn the technology changes and advantages into a business advantage, right? Uh, I, I think the, the whole purpose around software defined and this move to intent-based networking is to make it much easier to run your platform whether it's consistent tools, automation configuration, having the network do what you want it to do, make sure it's secured, it's quality of service, it's security is working the way you enable it, and to do that in a cost-effective fashion rather than the traditional, I've got 100 protocols or 1,000 protocols, I've got proprietary hardware, I need specialists. I shouldn't need specialists to run the platform to enable applications. So in our environment, we have several customer examples. They've seen tremendous OPEX savings. Now, when you have OPEX savings in the IT department, you can reinvest that into new services or applications which enable your, you know, your employees, your partners to work much more effectively and with more capability, agility. And so that obviously also drops, drives the top line because it's creating competitive advantage. So OPEX savings reinvested into competitive advantage, giving your employees the capability to sell more uh, and to be more beneficial to your end customers. So the, the business benefits of intent-based networking are really all about being able to free up your IT teams to be able to uh, implement advanced levels of automation in your network. And when you are able to automate more tasks in your network, it frees up your IT team to be able to do things that are of higher business value for the organization. So when you are able to automate tasks that you once had to do manually, it allows the IT team to be able to focus on uh, enabling new applications to optimizing infrastructure and really uh, delivering value to the business as opposed to just trying to keep the lights on all the time. I've been told that intent-based networking has some significant implications for scalability. Can you describe how this will help someone really build out a massive uh, data center such as for the Internet of Things? Intent-based networking enables powerful automations of your operations, which is critical to scale the infrastructure that is required for your business. Really, when you start to do scalability with intent-based networking, you get a huge advantage because instead of managing each individual box, you manage the entire cluster as a system. It's one thing. So it's SDN, but it's at a higher level now. It's at an intent level. And so if you're doing something that it's a distribution for video and latency is really important and quality of service, you can express that as an intent. And now as you scale out and you grow, that intent stays intact and you're managing the entire thing rather than just piece parts. I think this whole area of intent-based networking, disaggregation of hardware and software, the move towards open source and the concerns that, oh, my network's not going to be as scalable. You know, the hyperscale companies have been doing software-defined networking for many, many years, using the capability uh, around APIs and programmability uh, to build, you know, leap and spine type of architectures that are scalable, you know, globally amongst many, many different types of connections, many types of users, whether they be consumers or businesses and businesses of all sizes. So I think absolutely the, the idea of the, the network is not just about the core, the campus, it's moving out to the edge. The area of disaggregation, the area of intent-based networking is going to give a lot more flexibility and capability to manage the scalability, but in a much easier fashion than the traditional proprietary approach. 
a big part of some vendors' implementations of intent-based networking is openness. Can you talk about what openness means to you in this context? So openness is an important part of intent-based networking because if you think about the ability to automate the network, the network needs to be able to have integration points at various parts of the business. So it needs to be able to accept the, uh, the intent of what the operator wants, the, what you want the network to do. But it also needs to be able to, to ingest uh, information from applications that are running on the network so they can express their intent. So fundamentally, these intent-based networking systems have to be open to be able to allow integrations into uh, the devices that the network is going to be managing, into applications that are going to be running on, uh, on the network. And so openness is really a critical piece of intent-based networking. Intent-based networking provides an opportunity for openness like never before. And the reason is because the way you're interfacing with your infrastructure is by describing what you want not the specifics of how devices are configured. And therefore, uh, you, can, you have an opportunity to leverage devices from multiple vendors. Intent-based networking has definitely escaped from the lab and is out there in the real world. Can you talk about where intent-based goes from here? I think the whole concept around intent-based networking is in its very early stages. I, I, I know some are giving examples of, of customers that are using it. Uh, you could argue, by the way, that those that are using auto configuration and fabric manager are moving to SDN are, in essence, using some form of intent-based networking with the practice or policy rather than a product or software. Uh, but I think it's in its very early stages. As I said before, I think this is going to evolve. Just like SDN has evolved from three to five years ago to where it's moving today, uh, I think intent-based networking is in its very early stages. I think some companies are making more hype than reality out of it. Uh, and the actual adoption we see in companies are conversations, uh, maybe some pilot or greenfield opportunities, uh, and then they'll move out as they see the various types of offerings and solutions that they can potentially enable. That's, by the way, why open is very important. Don't lock yourself into something for the next three to five to seven years. Look at the involvement and the changes in technology that's going to allow intent-based networking to happen and introduce those as they make sense, which you can't do in a proprietary environment. You have to have an open environment to introduce new third-party applications or software or potential you know, applications or appliances. I actually think we're just at the beginning of intent-based networking. Uh, it's a great concept, but I think ultimately what you'll see is just like we have networking solutions that are tailored towards specific workloads. So we have an Ethernet storage fabric at Mellanox. What you'll see is that intent-based networking starts to contemplate workload-specific things. So you'll have video, you'll have uh, machine learning, you'll have artificial intelligence, all of these deep learning things, each of those will have a different set of recipes associated with that. And you'll see more and more that you'll actually do intent-based networking that's specific to workloads. Intent-based networking is very nascent technology at this point. We've really seen the emergence of uh, IBM in the last 18 to 24 months, and we've seen some productized versions of intent-based networking come out uh, even more recently. So we're still in the very early stages of intent-based networking, but we are seeing some uh, critical components of intent-based networking around increased levels of visibility that can help you automate some tasks in the network. Those may be further along than a full-fledged intent-based networking system. So we expect that uh, vendors will be offering components of intent-based networking increasingly both now and into the future. Um, but to have a full-fledged intent-based networking system, we're probably years away from that. Intent-based networking is very real. Uh, there are production deployments uh, out there across enterprise service providers and web scale. Um, we pioneered it, but then since then, industry, other uh, large industry uh, leaders in networking has embraced it as well. Uh, so I think it's here to stay. As you've heard, intent-based networking is a hot topic and is really offering tremendous opportunities to lower the costs of operating a data center and a carrier network. For NetEvents TV, I'm Alan Zeitschik.